morning. Uh, we're going to call this meeting, the facilities meeting, to order. Today's the 24th. It's 9.01 already. I'm behind the eight ball. Um, motion to approve the last meeting uh, minutes. Uh, motion by Mr. Garrity, second by uh, Mr. Loeb down there. I see your hand. Thanks, Bill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Okay, why don't we start right with the uh, airport agenda today. Uh, and then we're going to do, the, obviously, DBW, and then we're going to uh, have a recap on the budget by Mr. Hajos. That's the, uh, that's the format today. Um, so let's go to the uh, airport agenda. Uh, we go right to number four, which is committee authorized. Uh, so I will give that to uh, either Don or Kevin. Don. So we continue to work with our consultants on a glare study to ensure that the solar um, RFP when we put it out will, will meet the needs of the FAA and the pilots at the airport. And we just submitted a preliminary glare study to them this morning. And we'll be waiting for some feedback with some additional studies for the next month. So more to come next month. Okay. Yes, Mr. Wild. Mr. Chairman, thanks. Just a comment. I was in uh, Dover, Delaware. Yep. last week and one of the facilities that I passed by was a NASA research facility with a big airport loaded with solar panels and they're actually installing so I thought mm -hmm. that would be quite interesting it is something that's uh, happening around the country so let's make this happen if we can absolutely any other comments okay uh, number five information for discussion and review uh, Don uh, this is our monthly FBO hangar revenue update. So last year, this time, we collected about $56,000. And this year, we collected um, $105,000. So we're up $50,000. Wow. So we're up fifty grand over last year on this. Yeah, double. Yeah. Wow. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Any comments on that? Mr. Chairman, another comment, if you don't mind. Don, how are we doing on utilization? So are we 100% full, or what percent full are we? We're, yeah, we're basically 100%. I do have one hangar, number four, in the old hangars that uh, is not full, but I have two people interested. Um, the problem with the old hangar is they, they have a smaller wingspan capability, and I, I would have already filled it if we had a little bit wider. But um, I think I'm going to fill that shortly, and then we'll be at 100% for all the hangars. Very good. Thank you. Okay, uh, budget review, we're going to wait till the end. We're going to wait. Uh, so now it's privilege of the floor for any comments or discussion. I just want to add something real Mr. quick. Mr. Hajos? I have photos here for everyone to see. Uh, this is of the balloon fest this past weekend. Uh, as most of you have probably read by now, we had record numbers. Uh, and it was a great weekend. We had a launch. All the launches at the airport went. Uh, as most of you know, we rent out the parking lot, not rent out the parking lot, we, uh, we do the VIP passes under Eventbrite, we uh, sell parking spaces across the street from the airport, uh, and then we have the VFW collection. I want to say thank you to Brad, Mike, and Gene uh, here for coming out Saturday night because the VFW kind of left us short, uh, and they came out and collected for us. Uh, so for the parking lot across the street, we're down a little bit in numbers this year. Last year we brought in about $5,000. This year we're about $4,200. The uh, VIP park passes that we sell online last year was about $5,000. We're up. We actually are up to $9,400 this year wow. for those. Almost doubled. Yep. And then the last is the VFW collections this year came in at $23,189. Uh, Friday was $6,800, Saturday was $73 in the a.m., $57 in the p.m., Sunday a.m. was $3,200. And with the VFW getting their 15%, uh, that leaves the county with $19,710, which is up from last year's $11,000. So we were up $8,000 on the VFW. Yep. We were up uh, almost $5,000 on... Uh, on the VIP parking, and we were down about 800 bucks on the uh, general park. Yep. Okay. That's wow, that's phenomenal. The weather couldn't have been nicer. Uh, 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 no wind. Uh, I mean, wow. The the last part of this is I don't have the overtime numbers yet, but uh, 
based on what we have, this would be the first year since I've been here at the county that what we took in will cover the cost of my overtime. So this would be the first time that this will actually be either budget neutral or a, gen uh, a revenue generating event, which the publicity alone from this is just off the charts. I mean, uh, there's not a person in the Warren County or surrounding counties who weren't, was not talking about this event. So uh, you guys did a great job, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, Don, I mean, uh, uh, Yeoman's work, uh, the hours you guys put in to make this successful, along with uh, some supervisors that volunteered, uh, I can't say enough. And uh, that's what makes Warren County, I think, the best county in the state. And uh, I'll continue to say that until there's no breath in me. Um, Mr. McGowan, did you have a comment? Uh, yes, I just wanted to uh, bring up uh, something that I observed in working. I ended up working a, a lot more voluntary than I anticipated because I was having such a good time. But I, I want to put uh, what I'm going to, I want to make a recommendation or, you know, a thank you here, and also I'm going to do it at the board meeting. But that DPW crew, all right, and the camaraderie of the people that work there, and let me tell you, it was long hours because I was there early and left late with them, and it was it was tiresome, I have to say. But I have to say the the, the crew and the respect that uh, Kevin Hangel's got, and and the way that they'd circle around him, and the cleansingness, and the way that everybody worked, I I want to go out and say to the DPW crew and, and Don, because it was a it was a nonstop weekend, and. And next year, I would like to look into maybe some accommodations for the, uh, the workers that live a little too far away, because getting out at 11 and being back at 3 a.m. and you live an hour away, that's not much of a nap time for, you know, for, you know, 14-hour day, 14, 16 hours for some of them. So I just uh, <coughs> I want to reach out there and, again, um, on the record, thank uh, all of you and your crew, and please uh, send that back to him because I, I was totally impressed, um, more so than I have been in the past, and I and I've never seen such a tight group of, of good. And not one of them didn't have a smile on their face and laugh. And Kevin, thank you for uh, for all you do. And like I said, I, I see the respect that you get there with your crew, and and I just think that was awesome. Thanks. Don't forget Don. You let me drive a golf oh, cart. Oh, I, I said Don. Yeah, Don. I had his own golf cart all weekend long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did come to it. <laughs> okay. Thank you for those kind words, Mr. McGowan. Uh, very, very appropriate. Okay. Let's now move to the DPW uh, um, uh, agenda. Uh, and we'll go right to number three which is action agenda, the new business. Uh, Kevin? The first uh, resolution request we have on there is transfer of funds. Uh, this is for the new uh, electrical vehicle charging stations. Uh, we received bids. The lowest bid came in at $35,000, uh, which is under what we received from NYSERDA, which was $40,000. Uh, and we're just taking money out of uh, building maintenance, which we thought we could just pay for it out of there, but the treasurer's office has put it, asked us to put it under equipment code. So that's what we're doing is just transferring the money to the equipment code. Uh, is that your hand, Mr. Sokol? Yes, I'd like to move that, please. Mr. Sokol, I'd like to move that motion. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Loeb. Discussion. Mr. Strau? Yeah, where are the EV charging stations going to go, Kevin? Right out front of the county center in the parking lot out front. Okay. And those, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, those charging stations are universal? They are universal. Yep. Okay. And for those, you know, explain, Mr. Hajos, what universal means in this case. Basically that they will work on any electrical, like most manufacturers of electric cars today are uh, manufacturing cars that, that any charging station can be used on those vehicles. In the past, say Tesla, uh, you can only use their charging stations for Tesla cars. This will actually charge any of the newer electric vehicles out there today. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Stroud, did you have a follow-up? Yeah, just how many stations? Five stations and they're dual ports, so there'd be ten, ten, ten hookups. Thank you. Um, uh, I think it's Mr. Loeb and then Mr. Wild, I think. <coughs> how, how does the process work for a user? 
Uh, basically what it will be is once we have the stations installed, uh, users will be able to either download an app uh, that they can use to find where ch charging stations are or, you know, they'll, there's, most of it's done through a map. They can go online typically and see it. It won't be ours. It'll be through ChargePoint, uh, who's the company that's going to be installing the meters. Uh, and then what they would do is they can either put their credit card online or they can pay with the credit card here. Right uh, at the station? Right at the stations. Yeah. Do they, do yes, they, Mr. Uh, they come in at 8 o'clock in the morning, they put their card in and uh, work a double shift. The car stays hooked up the whole time. Is that the way it works? That's, yeah, that would be it. That's correct. Yeah. But the credit card keeps ticking or how does... It, it's a one. It's a one-time charge. It's based on whatever the usage may be. If it's and it's a rate per hour. We don't. I'm not sure what that is yet. We haven't established that yet. Thank you, uh, Mr. Wow. Did you have a question? I did. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kevin, um, normally we see a bid sheet. Did I miss something with this? It's a commodity. We don't normally do the. It's I don't. I don't necessarily have to bring because okay. it's a commodity. Usually, it's when so it's a service, and when you guys see the bid sheet. So as a follow-up. Um, I'd almost I'd like to see the financials that talk about the um, the, the long-term expenses that we might have, the warranties, um, you know, some of those aspects. Sure. <coughs> there are there any differences, significant differences in the two contracts in terms of the warranties, the additional charges? Well, there was have? there were more than, and I do have a copy of the sheet here, and I can I if uh, maybe Amanda or somebody can make a copy of that. Uh, we had I believe eight bidders total. Uh, out of the eight bidders, I believe four were dismissed because they did not submit uh, the proper paperwork with their bid. Uh, and then with the other ones, I mean, they were pretty much, the numbers fell from 35,000 upwards to, I think, 52,000. Uh, and most of the warranties and such were, were fairly the same throughout. Uh, there's a site validation and site activation fee for each one of these. And that's just basically to get the system up and running. Uh, those were the numbers that were kind of all over the place. Uh, some of them charged nothing. In fact, the site validation uh, from the lowest bidder, uh, there was no, no charge to them. But their site activation, there was a charge. Now, the next one up, site activation didn't have a charge, but the site validation, they did. So they kind of play with their numbers a little bit across the board. So just another question, if you don't mind, sure. Mr. Chairman. Um, do we have to do any kind of site work our, ourselves? Are we going to be we're ripping up our parking lots to do some underground? No. Uh, we're actually going to install a service with National Grid. We're working on that service with National Grid right now to put a service right out there at the pole to feed right to that area where the, those charging meters will be. Uh, that's covered under the, the National Grid grant. It was about <laughs> 10000 that we received in that grant. So that will be covered under that. But we will be doing that work in-house. Once we get the okay from National Grid, uh, we'll connect the service out there and then uh, plug in stations who is the low bidder. They'll be the ones to come in and just install them on the pads and everything we put in place. And just yeah, one more, if you don't okay. mind, Mr. Chairman, um, are we going to be publicizing this um, to some websites or some online resources for people to find these stations? As part of the uh, grant through National Grid and NYSERDA, we'll be doing some educational pamphlets, uh, and we will also do, there's an, there's an event, I, I apologize, I don't know what the event is, uh, I, I forget the name of it, uh, but we'll be doing a kind of a, a demonstration at that event for the electric vehicle charging stations. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Strau? Yes, uh, someday I hope that the county uh, starts getting some electric vehicles themselves, so we may need some stations, not this type, because right. this type with, with the, the National Grid grant has to be publicly accessible, right. which would get in the way of our workers when they wanted to use it during their breaks and so forth, whenever they bring the car in and everything else. We have to have that driving spot and we have to have a separate system dedicated to public employees. So that's something we just need to think about, mm -hmm. but it can't be this system. Correct. But mm -hmm. under this grant. It is, and the difference is uh, the stations that you could use for that. We have the Type 2 stations, which are a little bit quicker charging stations. The one you could use for the fleet, per se, if we had those vehicles in the fleet. You could go to the Type 1 stations, which are a little bit less, and they could charge overnight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Um, so we have a motion on the floor. We have a second. All in, I will now call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, let me get my glasses on here. You get a little older, you uh, wear the glasses. Uh, so what do we have next on the agenda, uh, Mr. Hajos? The next under referral and pending items, we had that the committee had authorized an RFP for construction of a new 80 by 90 foot structure for OES. Uh, we're in the process of wrapping up, putting the RFP together. Uh, and by next committee, uh, I'm hoping that I have the bids in for that, for that building. Any discussion on that? I think we've done a fairly uh, decent job of thoroughly vetting that, uh, if you ask me. You were great, Mr. A. Joseph, bringing the chart on all the possible options. I do agree. Uh, and uh, <laughs> do I have a second for that? No. And uh, um, this committee thoroughly vetted it. Uh, and uh, if there's no other discussion, we'll keep moving along. Seeing none. Uh, we will now get to the uh, uh, county facilities budget portion of this meeting. Uh, so if you all have the, you all have a copy of the budget in front of you, uh, and I will turn this over to Mr. Hajos. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I want to go over just kind of the front page of the sheet, which is kind of a summary. Uh, it, it actually goes back to 2018 actuals where we're at in 2019 and then I'm requesting what I'm requesting in 2020. As you'll see right now with fleet management, uh, I'm down basically 18%. Uh, buildings and grounds, I'm up 2% uh, and that's to do some paving and such around the county center. Uh, building 11, it seems like that's a lot uh, to be up 56%, but we're actually just taking some of the the expenses such as electricity and maybe gas and sewer, which were normally under the 1620 budget, we're actually putting it under that building. So we're just trying to cover the cost under that budget. Uh, Health and Human Services is up a little bit, uh, and that's based on some contracts that we have to do for monitoring for the heat pump stations. <coughs> and then you'll see, <coughs> excuse me, the airport is down 4% uh, for, for the expenses. So I can quickly, I don't want to drag it out, go through and start with uh, fleet management. <coughs> uh, you'll see that, in, in, and you'll see the numbers vary a lot in fleet management. Uh, a lot of those totals in the past have come from the amended, so they amended each one of those years, and that's for the vehicles that we uh, put out to bid every year. We don't normally do that until January, and then the number kind of is given to me once the bid is in from Tammy and then we include that into the budget. So looking at supplies uh, and insurance and such, pretty much everything has remained the same uh, throughout on that budget. Uh, the only other you know, travel education expense on the bottom is basically the easy pass that we get for those fleet vehicles. Uh, revenues under Mr. fleet. Chairman, Chairman, if you don't mind. Yes, so, Kevin, if I look at 2018, we had an $18,800 uh, reserve for automotive equipment. Correct. All right. So are we adding more to the reserve, Mr. <coughs> Budget Officer? That's an appropriation from the reserve. That's an appropriation Correct. from? Yeah. Okay. So what is our reserve? That The appropriation into the reserve every year is elsewhere, and it's in the general fund budget. Uh, and then in the beginning of the year, when we figure out what the vehicle requests are after the bid comes in, we appropriate from that reserve into the departmental budgets for them to buy their vehicles. Thank you for uh, the education. So again, under, under the revenues for that, uh, basically the sale of any vehicles and then the insurance recoveries are if we've had, uh, we've had an accident, we've gotten our insurance recovery on the vehicles. <coughs> Everyone said with that one, I'll shoot to the next one, which is A1620, which is buildings. Again, I'll go through kind of expenses fairly quick. They're really the ones that, and I don't really know that they necessarily stand out that much, is the, there's an increase in other equipment under 260, only an increase by 100 bucks. Uh, and then the law and landscaping under 270, there's an increase. And <coughs> the comments for what they're increased for are right below it. You'll see basically what the, what the request is from. 
uh, you know, whether it's the refrigerator, microwaves, chairs, uh, this is basically the way we lay it out for each one of the budgets. <coughs> Under the contractual expenses, the, the .4 codes, uh, pretty much everything has remained the same. Uh, there is not a, not a significant change in any of those whatsoever. Uh, the only one that has any bit of change is under 470 uh, contracts at the very end. And if you look at the uh, the comment page beyond that, you'll see, uh, and this is the increase that I was talking about for the heat pump computer uh, maintenance and monitoring. There's an increase in $15,000 there. Uh, we never had that under the Siemens contract before, so we started that under the Siemens contract this year. Uh, and then, of course, we have 18000 in there for the charging stations for maintenance, electric, uh, and internet. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Frank? Uh, I just wanted to point out that's for the new courthouse, that's, that contract. Oh, that's, I'm sorry, that is for the new courthouse. We never had it. All right. And of course, going to the revenue side of it, uh, you'll see under 1620 buildings, the 2400 codes is basically for the rent from human services, uh, public health, and WIC. Uh, the building lease rents from Cornell, and then the rent from D&G recycling. The last one on there is the $18,000, which would be the revenue we hope to to receive from the charging stations. So that number you put in, uh, Kevin, for the charging stations, um, what's your base bet on? I'm just kind of curious. I, it's a guesstimate, I'm sure. It, it was a guesstimate. Uh, I actually reached out to a couple of the other counties who have them just to kind of see what their numbers are. Uh, and I don't even know if that'll hold true. We'll wait and see how much use that we have on them for the first year, and I'll have a better number going into next year. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gerdy? Yeah, which one is the court revenue? That is the unified court. Uh, Frank, correct me if I'm wrong, that's the $90,000. Yeah. That's the 3385 code. Mr. Moore? Uh, yeah, just on the um, electric uh, stations, what is the source of that 18000 Is that user, is that fees for, for charging? That's correct. Okay. Okay, continue, Mr. Hajos. Uh, next is A1621, which is building number 11. Again, this isn't a huge budget by any means. This is the, uh, oh, Frank, what do we call that? It's, I think it's called building 11. It's the detention home, which is across, uh, across the way over on Gurney Lane. Uh, basically, no one is in that building. Uh, and again, it seems like there's an increase to that, but we're just covering all the expenses now under this budget as opposed to having them where they were before under the county center budget for the 1620 budget. It's just so no one catches us on it. 11 is actually the old WIC building and 12 is the detention hall, but the, the power and sewer and all that, are they're hooked together. So um, the, the historical society is paying their own bills. And that, correct. And this budget would be just for the small <coughs> Thanks for the clarification, Frank. Uh, Mr. Loeb. Thank you, the Chairman. I apologize. Just want to go back to the uh, 1620 on the, on the revenue. Uh, 847,000 in property rental. I was looking at the numbers, and you probably mentioned what the details were. What are all those properties that we're renting out? Uh, human services building. Uh, basically, it's human services pays for, that's the state, what the state reimburses us for, for them to be in that building. It's, right. it's a revenue back to us. It's basically uh, maintenance in lieu of rent. It's a maintenance, it's a maintenance in lieu of rent. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you. So, if I could expand on that, the rental of property you choose to have an offer and accept an RFP to sell that, you still have a revenue in here. This, yes, that was only done at the board meeting. These were made up before that okay. and turned in before that. 
Uh, Mr. McGowan? Yes, Kevin, you didn't have time over the weekend to change that? <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. McGowan, I did not. <laughs> All right, no worries. Thank you, Mr. McGowan, for your input. Uh, next is 81624 with the Health and Human Services Building. Uh, again, going through uh, the 24 is the contractual expenses. Uh, supplies, we actually dropped it down a little bit. Uh, and that's basically trash bag clean supplies and such that they use uh, throughout the building, toilet paper, plastic gloves. Uh, repair and maintenance of building property, uh, that's a couple little. Uh, not significant by any means. <coughs> this is the typical repairs that we have throughout the year, whether it's elevator, AC repair, fire alarm inspection. Uh, I know that now we're at the point of, I believe, 10 years old now with the building. So we're at the point of starting to do some carpet replacements and such within the building. Uh, so that may have brought that up a little bit. Uh, electricity. That's a number. We just we've increased it to the to eighty thousand. I'm not sure why on that one that we've gone up so much. Probably that's based on eighteen. Okay. I think that's what it was. It's eighteen. Average. We had an eighty one thousand. It was it dropped down last year, but we were assuming <coughs> we had around the eighty thousand dollar range this year. Uh, the next one that stands out probably out of any of them is contractual. Uh, I think, Frank, maybe this is the one I was referring to for the uh, the computer heat pumps, uh, the Apogee system through Siemens, uh, that increased that uh, for this year. And then we have the cooler tower maintenance, correct, is the other increase for this year on that. And that concludes the kind of the buildings and ground side and now we can shoot the air. Just, oh, just go back, you don't mind, Mr. Yeah, Chairman? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Wild, yep. Um, <coughs> I was just looking at the health and human services budget. It's up, what, 10%? From 2019 adopted, $60,000 approximately. What's our revenue out of that health and human services? I didn't think that up before. That was 250,000. Yeah. That's 2411. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Now on to airport, which is the 5610. So as I started off in the beginning. Uh, hang on just a second, please. Mr. Thomas, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, before we move on to the airport, uh, at the uh, budget meeting, We had, uh, Supervisor Thomas had asked me to look at it. The generator that is over uh, at Health and Human Services is undersized. Uh, I didn't engineer it. Uh, it can only do basically the elevator and a couple other key items within that building. So uh, based on Super Th Supervisor Thomas's recommendation, we looked at using that in countryside because theirs is it's probably reaching its limit. Uh, it can be used, uh, but the cost of putting in a new generator over here and putting in a new transfer switch uh, is approximately one hundred and approximately one hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars. I think we talked about in budget that it was a significant expense. And maybe we can look at it going into the beginning of next year and see if we can do something. Uh, but it is a hundred and ten thousand dollar cost to to upsize that basically the correct generator for that for that building. Um, Mr. Thomas, follow up. Yeah, um, my suggestion would be that uh, this is something that should have been corrected years ago, and I think we should move forward and correct it. Yeah, we yeah we included in this year's budget. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Thomas? 
I can't hear. I'm sorry. That we do it right now. Do we do it now? Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. McGowan and Mr. Wild. Yes, I just, uh, Kevin, you, you don't know what the KWs of that is. And then, you know, like I said, it doesn't seem like a whole lot to run over here and bring it up the countryside unless we can maybe use it in conjunction with the one that's there. Well, the, the winter countryside is only probably 30. Uh, and we're going to upsize it to almost, if we use this one, to 200 and 250 or 275. Is uh, it 275 over here? No, that's a 230 over here. Or 230 here. over here. Yeah, and we're okay. looking at a 350 for, for, for over here. Right. Uh, for the problem is they're different voltages. So oh. there's some trans, uh, transformers and... Transformer switches and the switches for it. Are we three phase here? Yes. And it's sing yeah. it's single phase up there? Yes. I think, Mr. Wiles, you had a question? Yeah, I did. I was just curious if, if um, the generator does go down, do we lose revenue because we can't do the things that we need to do in public human services? Um, well, I think it probably, if anything, will result in overtime. Right. Um, and we, we get revenue on the overtime if, for DSS, for instance, about 70%. Uh, but claims backing up. We will just process the claims uh, when the power comes back on, and we'll get that revenue. Uh, Mr. Strau? Well, my question was about the transfer switch, and Frank answered that. But also, so by the time we get done dismantling, moving, resetting it up, buying a new transfer switch, are we ahead of the game by putting this generator up at Countryside versus buying a new one for Countryside? Um, Money-wise, it would it would be less money to move it. There would be more involved. You have to put a transformer, and we need to buy transfer switches either way. We need to get one right. for this building and one and for that building. Country, um, so I, I don't think it's I don't think it's outrageous to do it. Um, I think it would be less expensive to do that than it would be to try to twin another generator in with this one. Okay, so it's not just 110,000. It's 110,000 for this generator and the transfer switch, and then it'd be what, 50 uh, grand to 30, th about 35,000 for countryside. For moving and reinstalling and the and the uh, the pad and the switches switch. to go along with it. Oh, okay. All right, so, so it actually is going to be about 150, 150. Yeah, 145, 150, Mr. Strauss. So, uh, Mr. Thomas, the budget uh, officer, has recommended that we put it in this year's budget. Uh, I'm not sure the process on that. Well, we would have a resolution authorizing whatever it is that the, the work that Kevin needs done. If he if he needs board approval for that work, and we would also do a budget amendment. I think we would do m the majority of it out of fund balance, and we can check in with DSS and see how much of that we can appropriate uh, from uh, uh, state and federal aid. We we may be able to get some reimbursement on it. We'll have to check. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, Mr. McGowan, I saw you. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Frank, is this natural gas over here? No. Diesel. No. Diesel. Oh, 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 it is diesel. So, yeah. all right. So, that's good. Thank you. I, do. Okay. I know there was natural mm -hmm. up there, and, and I don't think Kevin wants to bring it up the road. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Hajos. I just wanted to caution that that was just an, that's just an estimate. Uh, when we put it out to bed, it may be less. It may be a little bit more. Okay. All right. Thank you. Continue, please, with your budget presentation. Sure. Do we want to do a resolution right now, based on this, though, or to move forward? I think that's the uh, the the committee. Is there a motion for that? There's a motion by Mr. Loeb. There's a second by Mr. Uh, um, Simpson. Uh, so the motion would read as follows, Amanda. You're going to be, <coughs> excuse me, a referral to finance to appropriate funds for the fund balance. Um, an amount it sounds like to be determined yeah. based on a quote for the purchase of a new generator for the emergency system. Okay. All right. So that would be the motion on the floor, and it's been uh, proposed by Mr. Loeb, second by Mr. Simpson. Now discussion. Mr. Strau. Amanda, does this include moving the old generator up to countryside? And no. I know that you need a resolution. <coughs> Excuse me, a resolution. Would that be 
be a separate resolution? I don't, I don't think you would need a resolution just to move the equipment from one of our buildings to another well, there's building. There's a cost associated with it, that's all. There is a cost associated with it. That it's, it's a thirty-five thousand dollar cost to go along with that estimated thirty-five thousand dollar cost. But we'll appropriate that money in, in this budget amendment. Uh, we'll include that in terms of having our people do the work. The, the committee or, or or my office can instruct that that be done, or Kevin's office. And uh, if we put this out to bid and we have to hire a contractor to do the new um, uh, generator, then we'll have a future resolution authorizing that work. Mr. Strau? As long as it's taken care of. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, would you read it one more time for us, Amanda, so that we're clear on it? It's going to be a referral to the appropriate funds uh, in an amount to be determined to cover the cost of a new generator for the human services building and an amount to move the current generator to country side. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. 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 Thank Carried. Okay, that would be referred to finance. Thank you. Uh, continue, Mr. Hedros. Okay, so we're on the airport, which is A5610. Uh, you'll see under under equipment, which is the point two codes, there really is no change. Uh, Everything remains pretty much the same where it's gone down. Uh, under contractual expenses, under the point four codes, uh, the only real increase that I see there is the two thousand dollars for water sewer taxes. Uh, it's just, just basically covering similar to what we had in 2018. Uh, and then under contractual, we're down a couple thousand dollars on that. One of the things that I have on each one of my budgets that you'll probably see this more so in DPW than you will here is there's the medical fees uh, that we have. In each one of my uh, departments, I have individuals who have CDL licenses uh, and this is basically the requirement for every two years of them having DOT physicals. Uh, so again, it doesn't show up you know, in a lot of these budgets here, but it will in my DPW budget. But Don does have a couple individuals down there with CDLs that will have to get uh, their DOT physicals every two years. That's 125 a year or 125 for the two years. My, well, actually, I'm sorry. We'll go to the revenue side of, of the airport. Uh, the the first one is any administrative expenses and such that Don has with any of the, the federal projects or the uh, the FAA type projects that he has. Uh, you'll see the next one is the balloon fest, which you'll see uh, in 2018 we were at. Uh, 10999 in collection, that's why I said $11,000 earlier. Uh, 2019, you're going to see that jump up to $19,000. Uh, I only did put in a departmental request for $11,000 for next year, uh, but based on what we have this year, that may change coming going into next year. Uh, airport rentals, is you can go down the line, uh, this is basically for the FBO, some of the buildings, the tie-downs, uh, some of the other hangars. Uh, and for, for rich air, uh, and you'll see the numbers are broken out down below. And the red, the, the last one on there is the airport concessions, uh, which that's for the restaurant. The one, of course, that we don't have any revenue on for this year uh, and next year would be the for the hang on the airport. Uh, but we'll also have to look at that, and that'll change if we have something next year with the solar. <coughs> And that basically wraps up for the airport as well. Just to refresh your memory on the hay situation, we used to get, uh, that was a revenue generator uh, so, uh, selling the hay out the airport. Well, that's now turned into, unfortunately, a uh, 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 neutral now. And we're not making any money on that because of the expense. We only had one person who wanted to even get the hay, and they were actually losing money because their machines are breaking down from hitting rocks and stones. Is that correct, Don? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have a five-year contract with them. The first three years are zero, and then year four and five will start paying us again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions uh, on the budget? Very nice job, Mr. Hejos, Mr. DeGraw.
Frank, all three of you, I know uh, worked hard on this. And Betsy did a phenomenal job as usual. Um, I, that goes without saying, but I need to say it. Uh, so thank you. Yes, Mr. Wild. Mr. Chairman, just just one question. I mean, you know, I'm trying to get a sense of what our, our um, contract with Richard that was uh, redone this past year. It was uh, projected to offset um, a significant amount of cost that the airport is um, charging us every year. So I'm, I'm wondering if we can just take a minute to go through the numbers. I haven't done that, but it's just a question that popped into my head. In 2018, the airport cost the county $400,000 or $600,000. I'm not sure what it was. But do the math. Maybe it was even $300,000. Looking at 572 versus 190. In 18? That's correct. All right. So in, in next year, it's going to be 350000 some quick quick math or thereabouts. So actually our costs are going up from 18. Mm -hmm. Don? No, our costs are going down by about 65,000. Right. So I'm just looking at the budget request versus the uh, revenues. Salaries. Salaries? Salaries. 50,000 salaries over two years? I know you guys do great work. So, in, so in two, I'll go back to it. So in 2018, we were at 572. We had revenues of 190, so we were about $400,000 basically in the hole. Uh, 2000, 2019, uh, we had budgeted for 629, and we are at 290, give or take, for the adopted budget under revenues. So you're again, it's six two nine three hundred thousand. So it's it's three hundred and change there. Uh, for twenty twenty, it is six oh six, and you're at two fifty. But this doesn't. This only takes into account. And, and Don, correct me if I'm wrong. We have budget kind of in here with the fuel sales would be as part of of uh, rich air, but it's not the final numbers. Uh, Right. We're, we're anticipating rich air is going to pay us about 60, 65,000, somewhere in there, depending on the fuel sales. And then we pick up another 65,000 because we took over the FBO, uh, the uh, hangers, the hanger leases. So we're anticipating going from 190 to 250, about a $60,000 increase. It might be a little more, might be a little less, depending on the fuel sales. So it's not really reflected in the request right. because we're conservative on our revenue. I'm not sure which, which number you're looking at. I'm just looking at the top level. This is page 10 out of 19. <coughs> well, that's a total request. So, so we have other factors in there, right, Betsy, that you were saying? Yeah, it's a combination. Right. Here we're just looking at plain revenue. When you're looking at the total requests, you're looking at the revenues and the expenses. So it's offset by other. Betsy, help me out here. It's offset by we have an increase in, in employee costs. Yeah, it looks like your salary, your personal services have gone up from 18 to. Right. Remember, in 18, uh, I think this is good. So you have six months of, of low cost for, for a manager also. That, that. So if you look at the personal services, uh, Supervisor Weil, we had 167 in expenditures in 18. Uh, this year, our, our amendment is 194. Uh, comparing it to, to 2020, we'll have 196. I mean, there is an increase there from what it was in 2018. Uh, as you look at contractual expenses, we are increased by $150. Uh, we've actually, I'm sorry, in, in the equipment and contractual, we've gone down uh, for what was budgeted for 2019 by, I don't know, $20,000, $15,000 there. Uh, and then in employee benefits uh, were, were down as well. Uh, Mr. Moore? So looking at 2018, um, subtract the revenues that we got from the expenses that we incurred, it cost the county $382,000. 
uh, the 2019 adopted budget, we budgeted $340,000. We budgeted a $42,000 savings. The budget request um, has uh, about $355,000 impact which is less than uh, the 2018 actual. And, um, you know, the budget officer and the budget team typically work on these, and I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but I don't think a $15,000 swing is going to do much damage. I, I think that that can be justified. So I would expect to budget the same budget impact for 20 as we did for 19. And, yes, I was just, you know, when we're going through the airport and the FBO, right, I thought there was going to be, you know, Hundreds of thousand dollars of no, I, I, difference, I, right? I, I think sixty thousand uh, dollars is nothing to sneeze at in oh, today's no, world, especially since the airport budget for years was going up and up and up. So now we've stopped the bleeding, and now we're actually uh, turning the corner. So I'm very pleased where we are uh, with this direction. And as as uh, somebody who used to uh, oversee stores and so forth and so on, that that's the type of direction that is uh, very very pleasing to uh, to me. Yes, Mr. Ajos. I just want to add on. I mean, we again, we we are staying. I don't want to say necessarily neutral. Neutral what we've been to in the past. Moving forward, again, we have the solar possibility, and we also, as we brought to committee earlier this year, the other revenue sources that we can gain uh, from the airport, whether it's be on the land side or on the air side. Uh, so it's only going to get better in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, uh, any other discussion? Yes, Mr. Thank you, uh, Diamond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kevin, I was just looking at your revenue numbers uh, on the airport in 2018. Your actual was $190,000 plus. Uh, you adopted the amended budget was $290,557. Uh, your adopted budget was the same. This year, your request for your proposed revenue was $250,000. 639 that's approximately 40,000 less than last year. Could you explain why that could occur? No, I can't. Okay. I the other question well, I have. I think, it, I think it might have been two factors, correct me if I'm wrong. One, uh, there was a delay in the FBO contract, and I think you were looking to, for an increase with the FBO possibly with that, that and also was. the hay was in there also, correct. So that was a that was, these, these were guesstimates. Okay. But I can tell you that the 250 is an accurate number. Okay. The other question, thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, is that you've actually collected 143,126 in revenue year to date. Do you expect to collect 147,000 from now till the calendar year? Could you explain how how you're going to do that? We haven't received all the revenues in for this year. So we okay. still have questions to do that, correct. And that'll be 147000 Approximate. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Strauss, second by Mr. McDevitt. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Adjourned. Did you take any kind of action?